Hey everybody, it's me, Asia D, coming to you from the workshop. Um, doing a little bit of a part two here on strawberry jalapeno jam. The part one that was uploaded a while ago uh, was basically the strawberry prep. Um, I managed to slice some jalapenos real thin and we're about to get those mixed together and make us some strawberry jalapeno jam, which coincidentally happens to be one of the most popular flavors I make. A lot of people love the sweet and spicy. And stay tuned, in future episodes we'll have some other stuff. You know, I'm working on a mango habanero, that's gonna be nice. And uh, we'll see where that leads. But for now, I have myself a new Bell Fresh Tech Jam and Jelly Maker which hopefully will make things a lot easier in on my life um that way i'm not in the house you know with big pots and everything i mean i do have um a double hot plate i can have pots out here if i want to but it just makes my life a little bit easier to have this automatic jam maker because i can turn it on and kind of walk away from it i mean i always have to keep an eye on it obviously we don't want it to overboil and it already has done that <laughs> it's overboiled on another batch of jam so I definitely gotta keep an eye on it but we will be doing a little video here for let's see how long do I have on this 30 minutes we shall see I mean the last batch I did I had to put it in there you know a couple times because those of you that have had my jam you know I put my fresh fruit in whole or at least sliced I don't cook the fruit before I transfer it to anything else so this is taking a little adjustment, but bear with me. We will get it together, and this is going to be a really nice batch of jam. So let's get started. We have our jam maker here with our fruit already inside it. Now this thing does have options for jam and jelly. Basically, we hit the jam, and it automatically sets it to 21 because it assumes that you've done, you know, mashed or cooked vegetables and fruits. As you can see, I have not. So I kick, I kick it into 30, and then I hit enter, and it has a little blade in there that kind of starts working. You know, I get my ingredients, basically. My fruit, my water, throw a little bit of that in there. There's already water in it, but I just want to make sure that it doesn't dry and, and burn. That would be most unpleasant nothing worse than a dry jam and just because it asks for multiple ingredients we're going to throw a little pectin in it now because according to the instructions i have to add sugar later after about four minutes i guess that's because after four minutes it's appropriately heated and that's all gone i guess after four minutes it's appropriately heated and it is able to melt the sugar properly. I don't know. It didn't exactly specify. But we will find out. Oh. We will absolutely find out. And this is a batch that will make about 12 to 18 4 ounce jars. So yeah. This is going to this is gonna be good. Because everything is so fresh. We definitely want to keep it going down a bit. says to leave the lid off until you add sugar or you know just read the instructions on what jam you're making because sometimes your jams don't necessarily need to have their lids on it requires air so that it doesn't bubble over and just to err on the side of caution because we're dealing with fresh stuff we're going to throw a little just a little more pectin in there because I definitely want this to gel up. I've had a couple situations where I've made jam and it's still liquid. It's, it's still loose. We don't want that. And this, and because it's fresh fruit, it's going to make its own juice. So uh, while I didn't need to add too much water to it, I still added just some so that the water doesn't completely, you know, cook out. We definitely don't want that because then it'll stick to the pot and it will burn. And that is an absolute no-no. So we are at 28 minutes right now. When it hits 26 minutes, it'll beep four times. 
and that is when you add your sugar according to the instructions anyway personally i prefer my old-fashioned way of doing it putting it in a pot and boiling it within an inch of its life but this will allow me to make jam faster so that i will be able to put out more jam more quickly i absolutely enjoy you know how it makes my life a little bit easier we're gonna see if it's worth it now yeah, one more minute before we add the sugar Alright, so we are ready to carefully add our sugar. I'm just going to do a thin little line here as it spins. And that is more than enough. Now, when standing here next to it, I can tell you it is definitely hot. Now, for this, we're going to leave the lid off of it because it will absolutely boil over and we don't want that. So I keep an eye on it to make sure, you know, none of our fruit or our veggies or jalapenos decide they want to escape on us. And we have 25 minutes worth of hopefully soothing jam making. So buckle up, get comfy, and uh, watch jam spin. <laughs>
right, let's see. Ooh. Thing about strawberries is, once they get to cooking, they float. Let's see. They don't mix well like this when they're in a floating process. But so far it's looking good. I got 15 minutes left on it. Pretty darn good looking right now. We'll let it keep going. It's still, it's still cooking. It's just once, once strawberries and peppers tend to get soft and cooked, they float. So they're not really getting mixed as well as I would hope. That's all right. You can always push that down, mix it up a little bit. It's getting cooked. Most definitely. It's getting cooked. And it's looking good. Now, as you can see, it'd be at this part where it would bubble up and boil over if there was a lid on it. Because it's definitely a frothing and foaming here. But this is good. It's supposed to do this. Everything is getting perfectly cooked. And in another 10 minutes, it'll be cutting off. And according to the instructions, it has a 30 minute cool down period. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it cool down so I can, uh, at least a little bit, so I can safely uh, remove the jam and put them in jars. And then part three will be jarring everything up and getting it over here into our water canner. Also, ball fresh tech. Real nice, even got a little spigot and everything in there. You know, it's, it's a really nice hookup. I like it a lot. And we're gonna see just how helpful this darn thing turns out to be. So T minus, and then we'll be done with this part.
Alrighty now. See, some people will put butter in their jams to take down the foam. I like the foam. Foam tells me everything's done. We are on our last minute here. It's going to be beeping at us, telling us it's done any second. And then it goes into a 30 minute cool down phase. And it is done. So what you're supposed to do is hit cancel and you see the CO. It's cool down. To help it cool down faster, you want to unplug the darn thing. That way, it's not burning up energy. And you basically come back in about 30 minutes to see what's going on. But for the most part, That'll be done. Once it cools off, at least enough to safely sponge it into a jar. Doing that. And uh, next part will be about putting it in jars and getting it into our contraption here. So, keep an eye out for part three. And we'll see you around. We'll see you soon.